and no problem i can pray yeah loving heavenly father oh god thank you very much oh god once again for this opportunity this evening for all of us to gather through this coach institute under the leadership and guidance of dr potna to be understanding the various theological uh, oh god uh, subjects oh god thank you so much for giving us this opportunity thank you for the inspiration you have given to dr potna to start this classes and guide all of us thank you for giving all your wisdom to him and the patience and the time for him to uh, oh god prepare the material and present it to us oh god continue to bless him and his family oh god thank you very much for the wonderful way you have controlled the covid uh, or any such uh, illnesses in their family thank you so much for the complete recovery you have given to him and his family thank you for all the brothers who have gathered here some of them who had the symptoms of cough and cold like chekri dr alexander we pray for all of them oh god their families also give complete total recovery oh god i believe chekri has completely recovered thank you so much for it similarly we believe dr alexander is also totally recovered oh god continue to oh god keep your angels around these families and continue to protect them oh god from any kind of symptoms and remove it completely oh god we pray for your mercy we commit all the uh, god all the brothers who are here today to this class to your uh, wisdom and uh, to the wisdom of dr potna to enable us to understand these various theological concepts and be enriched in, in our spiritual uh, mindedness of our continue to bless us we keep we also commit the power and the technology and other interruptions that may come to your hand of god kindly keep any disturbances away from us so that we can concentrate on these classes and can be personally oh god enriched through these classes thank you so much for giving us this opportunity particularly for me to pray today for this class and the session we pray in the name of lord and savior jesus christ amen amen thank you brother for that lovely prayer uh yesterday also we discussed a practical aspect of culture and today also very light subject we deal from tomorrow onwards i come back again little stuff so today we just get into a practical aspect of understanding the culture particularly differences in culture um this lesson number 13 talks about differences in culture unless we know the differences we may not be able to be effective in serving people so maybe let me ask a few questions uh, because people are still coming before they get into the class uh, those who are present able to talk some are driving that's fine um, maybe one or two are outside but those who are settled down in the class can help me answer me what is the difference uh, what are the major differences in your culture where you are right now found with the culture back at home for example i come from a krishna district a telugu state i am in hyderabad uh, it this also a telugu state but telangana but still it is a telugu state a telugu um, a language but still there are differences in a similar manner in your particular place where you are right now you might have observed a lot of differences in your mother culture that where you grew up as a child hope you understand the question if anybody can answer me one or two differences that you observe is it uh, purely from the culture side uh, doctor or uh, the spiritual side uh most the yeah culture and i think spirituality also included in the culture yeah maybe you can uh, start ex- expressing then we will understand it no problem yeah yeah culture side i'll just give purely culture not spiritual side i'll just give one simple example i worked in five countries i worked in india i worked in japan i worked in mauritius tanzania and kenya Mm. i can tell you the differences just quickly in one sentence for all these five countries mm-hmm. uh, we, we think india is workaholics people tend to work very late 
but japanese are the real workaholics but mm. best part of the culture i wanted to give you an example mm. the rule mindedness the way they follow the rules civic rules for example in india if you see a red light mm. people tend to still cross the zebra crossing and uh, go to the other side mm. in japan i have noticed middle of the night at 2 o'clock mm. 2 am that is uh, middle of the night when there is absolutely no car in sight anywhere across the entire stretch of the road you mm. will still find the japanese waiting at the red signal just mm. to cross because they are they are like computerized mind they just can't cross mm. in case if you are driving on that road and if you notice at a distance somebody is crossing mm. it was more than 100% sure it is an indian living in japan who is crossing the red signal <laughs> <laughs> i can tell you that similarly yeah. when it comes to the spiritual side of it mm. uh, honestly in kenya the amount of christianity uh, they have in their mind the way they worship the god in the in the mm. church the way mm. they involve themselves in singing and you know uh, the devotion the level of devotion mm. is extremely far far higher than any church i have seen in india for example mm. uh, i i grew up in boxing fellowship Mm. uh you know you go to hebron hyderabad it's not to criticize anything but i'm just comparing you find people mm. coming from morning till low clock till 4 o'clock in the evening in different batches people come and go but you don't find that here if the church is starting by 8:30 more than 95% of people are in the church and nobody gets up till the entire session is over till the pastor says thank you all you can leave now nobody stands up but in india you will find many people once they put that uh, what do you call chanda they just start walking out mm. so it, it was very interesting i have seen this differences there are many interest differences but anyway i'll just restrict myself to this couple of differences excellent you are the right candidate to give uh uh the cultural perspective even the second thing, the, the the red light thing that's amazing it's exactly true uh, even the second example you brought to our notice um uh, spirituality even there is a culture involved in that so it is a culture of people no they come at any time they go at any time you know but uh, yeah thank you very much that's absolutely true anyone else brother hubert you find anything ha okay yeah um, I, i used to stay in camp puna mm-hmm. camp it is called uh, mm-hmm. which is a cosmopolitan area but mm-hmm. but uh, but in in, uh, in puna there is a camp and there is city so the mm-hmm. city people think that the camp area is a westernized part of the camp Mm. of punar mm. you know so but anyway where i was staying mm-hmm. uh, that that is the one area called center street where mm. where there were one side there were muslims mm. and one side there were um uh, hindus uh, mm-hmm. the hindus were mostly um i mean jaibims we used to call them mm. uh uh the lits of like mm-hmm. you know whatever i mean in, uh, there was these lanes they were called bimpura lanes like where all most of the hindus were staying and mm-hmm. and on the left hand side were all muslims like you no know? so uh, the place where i was staying there was uh, that there were four houses where all were christians like mm-hmm. so um, so they all the uh, all the people used to i mean on our road all the festivals are celebrated mm-hmm. everyone celebrates all the festivals mm. the hindu and the muslims uh, you will find the muslims uh, burning crackers even before the hindus for diwali mm. no so but one thing that strikes me is like just outside my house there was a um, um, Uh, lady who used to sell vegetables and things like that mm-hmm. uh, so when we used to put on the light at about mm. 
in the evening, six o'clock mm-hmm. or seven o'clock, like we used to sit there, like and when we used to put on the light, mm-hmm. she used to um, uh, bow down to that light, you know, join hands and bow down to the light. The light is come, like you know, like so. Mm-hmm. She, this is there was some honor that she used to give that light, like you know, in the evening. It was it was a bulb, it was an electric bulb, but it was light. And um, she would, uh, she would like you know like namaste like you know like it, it um, mm. like join her hands and like mm. Mm, and sort of pray to herself maybe or something mm, like that mm, mm. that the light is come like you know like mm. we, we used to always watch that like you know like mm. how mm, she's she's honoring the light and she's bowing down to the light even though it is an electric light like you know oh. so there were things like that which. Um, uh we noticed about different religions like you know mm. the hindus and how the muslims used to celebrate their uh, everything i mean uh, over, over there they have these they have put mics now mm. outside the madhira mics where five times mm. a day like you'll hear the um, azan going mm. on so so there is all, all kinds of uh, Sounds over there, like you know, like mm-hmm. mm, uh, uh, the mandir temple bells mm-hmm. ka sound and and the azan ka sound and mm-hmm. that way. Like now, um, what has happened over there is most of the people have have gone away to different parts of the town as the town is uh, mm-hmm. increasing, uh, growing up. Like you know, there are buildings coming up. Mm-hmm. Townships coming up, so like mm-hmm. the people who can afford to go out from there, they are all moved out from there. Like so, most of the Christian people from there, like, are disappeared. Like, and um, mm-hmm. it, is, it is becoming more of a Muslim territory. Though Hindus are still there, they cannot go anywhere from there. The Marwadis mm-hmm. also have moved out from there. Like, mm-hmm. there, is, there used to be a Marwadi temple also just next to my house. Mm-hmm. Ah. So all Wonderful. these you, you are yeah. straight there uh, in a multicultural context. Correct, 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 mm. correct, mm. correct. So, what is the main one difference you found with this multicultural context? It's amazing. You brought uh, a light, Diwali. Light. You know, everybody celebrating. Uh-huh. Though it is, uh, though faiths are different, a yeah. kind of uh, looking at. A light in a cultural context. Ha huh, ha. Huh. Mm-hmm. Wonderful. Thank you very much. Mm-hmm. So let's get into a few slides today. I'm not mm-hmm. getting into really stuff. Just known things. We just look at the peripheral level. From tomorrow onwards, I'm getting again into uh, some theoretical, constructive frameworks where we can look at religion and culture. And uh, next week, we we learn that such stuff. And then we come back again, mission praxis. I have a few slides which are really designed uh, for witnessing gospel to a multicultural context of India. Some of the practical issues we are going to do, deal. Um, uh, we will have a, a hot, hot discussions like uh, symbols, um, uh, the Hindu cultural practices. We are going to discuss all of them. But let's today get into a peripheral level. We already exposed to this teaching, but again, it's a let's brush up our memory. Culture, norms, and value system. You know, our life runs with the cultural norms and value systems. As uh, Brother Smiles brought it to our notice in the Western cultural context, particularly where he worked in Germany and some other places. It's a culture, uh, a norm, and uh, and the value of red light it means red light. Whether anybody see or not, they stop. But in India, whether it is a red line or a green line, or yellow, or whatever it may be, uh, uh, it, it's my emergency matters. And sometimes uh, people voluntarily they cross. So it, it became a culture. So really, the, the 
the cultural norms and value systems are amalgamation of all these things. They give and take. Religion contributes to that norms and cult systems because in a Hindu cultural context, um, the underestimating others and oppressing others, having divisions is a part of culture. For example, casteism is a culture. It is it, the, the religious system brought that culture into a society norms. Even untouchability became a culture because religion contributed. Theology contributes to religious norms and value systems. And also political philosophy, economic uh, uh, philosophy, even education, you know, even the language, social structure, religion, all of them contribute to the cultural norms and value system. If we really want to see a good biblical value system, we have to deal with all of these things. Not only dealing with one Hinduism may not solve the problem. They all these, uh, they all contribute to the norms and value systems. Even same thing with the uh, Christian religion also contributed some uh, several uh, cultural and norm or, and values which are not really practical. For example, mission agencies have brought so many value systems, policy. Sometimes a policy is important whether people die or not. That's not a matter. Policy, pattern. And uh, sometimes churches, they have their own policies, the church structure. That becomes a value. Uh, now, uh, but Smiles also brought again the value system of uh, attending a worship service. In an Indian system, it's a kind of value system. No, it's a group value system. Anybody come at any time, they go, pastor keep on preaching, you come on time, but uh, it's uh, no, people don't listen because it is there in the culture. But uh, he says in uh, Kenya, you know, you, you don't need to inform people. It is their responsibility. They come exactly on time and they stay there and they go. Like, you know, Initially, when I started this Zoom, Zoom class, 40, 50 people came because that month I preached only spiritual devotions. People across um, diverse cultures joined. And a few, one or two Americans also joined. They used to be there exactly right time. And uh, they stopped coming. You know what is the reason? They used to come 15 minutes minutes, sometimes half an hour, nobody was there, only myself and one or two. And they, they said, it, it doesn't work with us, with you. You carry with your Indian friends. And I had to start another class for them, but that didn't work out. Because uh, that one month, I really struggled. People used to come before I say, amen, people used to come and go. Then I thought that doesn't work. And I restricted myself to those who are very disciplined and uh, follow the lecture. And now I have only 10. 15. So I think we have 15, but on and off in between 10 to 15. Very regular, punctual, because we, we have a uh, value system here. So in a similar fashion, we have the all the politics, economy, education, language, social structure, religion, all of them contribute to the cultural norms and value system. So when we are working with a society, it's not easy. We are not only dealing with the religion, we have to deal with the philosophy, economy, politics, social structure, language, education. So transformation should take place in all of them. That's the job of a, a, a religious guru, to see the transformation in all aspects so that we have a transformed society. So having said that, let me move a little further. Cultural appreciation appreciation, aspects of culture, values, customs, symbols, and language. No, all of them are important. Values, no, every culture has their own values. Some of sometimes uh, uh, values that really doesn't matter and they are not really values, but it looks like they, they are values for them, but they are not really values. Customs, 
very good customs, particularly in India and Asian contact, we have so many good customs. And the same in the West also, they have so many good customs. In every culture, they have, there are so many good values, customs, symbols. By the way, Asian context is known for symbols. And we need to study the symbols. When we get into a new cross-cultural setup, we need to study the symbols and their language. You know, language has such a great, uh, uh, fascinating uh, incidents and the language is amazing. Unless we learn the language, it's very difficult to communicate. It looks like we know the language, but we really need to understand what do they mean by that. So, cultural destiny, diversity, values represent personal or social preferable models of conduct or states of existence that are enduring. And also we see these values, why doesn't McDonald's sell hamburgers in Nepal? When I visited several places, you know, the, I never knew what is hamburger because I grew up in a tiny interior Indian context and I grew up very traditional cultural context. Hardly I eat meat, but now and then uh, I started eating after becoming a follower of Christ some meats, not all. So hamburger, I thought burger. I, 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 because in India, I never ate what is hamburger. So I said, um, yeah, hamburger. I had a bite, then I had a doubt. I asked what is there inside when uh, they said it was very difficult for me to digest. I had to go to a restroom and vomit. So here is a question. In McDonald's, in the other countries, they sell hamburgers, but Nepal, they don't sell. Do you know why? Anybody can answer? Just a guessing. You can guess and tell me. Because there, because there, uh, the majority of the people, uh, they, they are Brahmins, no? so, so they do not eat. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, that's a, uh, no, that's okay. Why? Okay, if it is Brahmins, what is the problem? Of, what is there in Hamburg? The beef is there. Like. Beef is there. Beef. There is beef in the burger. Uh -huh. So, in India, many people don't eat beef. Mm -hmm. So, is it a beef in India? Brother Smiles, what is there in Kenya in hamburger? You have the pork also. Yeah, pork. actually, hamburg hamburger is known for pork. Um, hmm. that's a special. Hot dog. So in a Maybe context, I think uh, it is a cultural context. It's not the food context. See, food is a part of culture. That's what we are learning. All foods are good because God sanctifies every food is good. And we cannot underestimate people on the basis of what they eat. We should respect. But it's a matter of culture. That's the reason McDonald doesn't sell hamburgers in Nepal. If they sell, what happens? They lose the business. So why I say this example? So in a similar manner, we need to understand the culture to take our value systems. Because we are taking the truth, gospel, to different places. And we need to, we need to understand that culture and give what they need. We cannot pressurize them to take hamburger. People may not like, people may not take. In some cultures, yeah, I read uh, somewhere uh, when the, the translators uh, started translating the Bible in one culture, um, uh, the go, uh, sheep is an abomination, uh, an abomination. Pig is a glorified uh, uh, animal there. So they had to translate Bible saying that the Lord is, you know, the Lord is my shepherd. If you translate the Lord is my shepherd, people may misunderstand. They had to translate the Lord is my pig because that's how their cognitive mind can understand. So here the cultural diversity is so unique. We need to understand that. Now here is another question. Non-verbal gestures. 
know, mostly Eastern cultures communicate so much volumes of messages through non-verbal. When a guest comes and we ask, do you want a chai? They say, what does it mean? Yes, I want. They don't talk. And otherwise, if they don't want, mostly we, we are prone and habituated to communicate through non-verbal ways of communicating. I really struggle when I travel some places because it is there in my subconscious level to communicate non-verbally, which is very difficult for a Western mind to understand. So it took time for me to learn. So here is a question. What does it mean, non-verbal com uh, 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 communication, particularly in the Asian context? We are all Asians, either in Kenya or India. What does it a mean little, in India? Pardon? A little, uh, uh, no. a little. Not, no. Nodding the okay. head. A little. Nodding the head uh, like this, left side, okay. right side, down okay. and up. Which okay. uh, Westerners, I know okay. one missionary, I was with him. Yeah, they always yeah. used to tell me, what does that mean? <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. Because they, they want to know. Because they, it's very, it's a strange thing for them. So this, what does this mean? When you, uh, with the hand, if you say, I think uh, you're not able to see. You see the picture there? Are you able to see the picture on the screen? Yeah, yeah, with the hands folded, fingers yeah. folded. Yes, yes, like yes, yes. What does it mean? What does it mean? Pleading, maybe pleading. Okay, yeah, in Indian context, this is pleading sometimes. Are you bow, 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 bow. If, if we say like this, right? Yes. So, but in Italian context, this means that you partner uh, is cheating on you. Your partner is cheating on you. However, if the hand is uh, pointing down, it is only the word of bad luck, bad luck. You see different other uh, um, uh, non-verbal postures, the hand, I'm like, you know, uh, what is this? Uh, I think some movie picture on the wall post I have seen somewhere long back. Baba, Baba. Yeah, Baba. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. What is that, uh, Chakra? I forgot. Baba. Baba. Na. Uh, ba 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 na. Baba. Rajnikanth. Ah, Rajnikanth. Yeah, yeah, correct. <laughs> More different, no? This, this indicates that you have counted up to even, but depends on the context. It can also symbolize a pistol. No, it is also a symbolize a pistol. But in India, if you symbolize like this, right? Children, we play like this. So even like this, and then uh, there are several ways of doing it, shaking. So what I want to say, in different cultures, we communicate in different ways. The same posture in Greece, they're just perfect. If they say like this, perfect. How do we say if it is perfect? Maybe, I don't know. How do we say in India, perfect? Maybe. With thumbs up, Anna. Thumbs up, yeah, it's perfect. Yeah. Yeah. So in Greece, that's perfect. But uh, this posture communicates in India like pleading. Somebody said, it's a pleading. Bob, 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 Bob. Come here. No, we say, please, 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 please. So different ways of, in Egypt, it is be patient. If they say like this, be patient. Let me unmute. Uh, Anil, please take care, Anil, please. Okay, individualism versus collectivism degree to which people in a country prefer to act as individuals rather than in groups. So why I brought that uh, non-verbal communication postures, we communicate the gospel very effectively if we understand the non-verbal communication of that host culture. Here I am Introducing host culture means where you are. 
home culture means where you come from. So host yesterday, I think, yeah, yesterday I reminded um, um, the peace child story, Richardson. When he went to that host culture, he understood the host cultures, um, the non-verbal communication of the child, exchanging the child. So he introduced gospel to that peace child communication. So degree to which people in a country prefer to act as individuals rather than in groups. Describe the relations between the individual and his or her fellows. So we are going to see the individualism versus collectivism. So we are mostly Asians are collectivism people. We, we, we go for collective opinion. But in the West, it is an individual opinion. And also um, the individualism and collectivism matters a lot in, in that culture. So following Christ is not an individual matter in an Asian context. It is the matter of society. Yesterday, I think uh, someone asked a question. I think it jo Brother Joseph asked when we had a discussion with uh, Brother Francis, you all had a good discussion. Why the followers of Christ from other faiths are not attending the church in Chennai? Because for them, following Christ is not an individual matter. But for us, those who are inside the church, Christian cultural context, it is an individual matter. You, you, you accepted Jesus as Lord and Savior, you have to come to church. But for them, faith decision is a collective decision. Society, what society thinks, societal bonds, relationships, there is a huge back of baggage at the back. So the collective decision matters a lot, describe the relation between the individual and his or fellows. Masculine versus femininity. Division of roles and values in a society. We need to very carefully understand today, feminism is on the high in theological education. Every seminary offers feminism, courses on feminism. In theology, there are several branches, Dalit theology, feminist theology, and um, uh, tribal theology, and liberal theology, evangelical theology, whatnot, so many branches. So feminism is really on the high, everybody talking about it. So particularly in Asian context, a male dominated society, uh, a male responsibility is very high in society and in this context, uh, feminism has been contributing. So division of roles and values in a society. Uh, how do we decide and who, whose roles are what? In the earlier days, wife and husband used to have only one bank account. Even the women are hardworking women in India and Asia because Asian women are very noble women and hardworking women. They work in the field, they get up early morning, they clean the whole house and they serve the food, they cook the food and they, they work very, very hard. They really contribute to the economy also. But mostly our society developed with a kind of Semitic cultural context. Even the Hebrew cultural context are the same. It is the man who runs the family and brings the dignity. But today that is solely diminishing and feminism is in the hike. And today there is a lot of fight between the family, um, wife and husband in the families. In spite of so many family conferences, teaching this and that, and still a lot of fightings, divorce rate is increasing because there is a tension. Who is the head of the family? I'm also yearning. And uh, my mobile, your mobile. You don't see my chatting and I don't see your chatting, your bank account and my bank, bank account, your shopping time and my shopping time and my friends and your friends and children friends. No, society is changing, the values are changing. The division of roles and values in a society is so complex. How, I, how are we going to present biblical truth into that kind of cultural context it is a very essential. We need to understand 
the biblical value of masculine and feminine. Masculine values prevail. Assertiveness, success, competition, that's the nature. You know, the man is always uh, looks for success, competition, assertiveness. Of course, now women are also doing the same thing. Feminine value prevail, quality of life. And that was in the earlier days, quality of life, spirituality, taking care of kids, serving the husband and uh, bringing honor and dignity to the family. Honor is most important. Maintenance of warm personal relationship in the family and service, care for the weak, solidarity. Wow, it's an amazing. This is really Asian context. But today, uh, we don't see that. And uh, there's- Family, I see. I also know that guy, uh -huh. he's a big diamond merchant in Belgium, uh -huh. and he he sent through a Chennai caterers, Madras uh -huh. caterer, biryani uh -huh. worth of telling uh -huh. about 10 people could eat. Uh -huh. He sent it to my house, it was a surprise. My uh -huh. wife was about to, I was in the process of making food, but she stopped it because his food has come. and. We prayed and ate it, and out of mm. that also we shared something uh, to the fellow who is doing the ironing, and the fellow who is my watchman and all those things. We have shared mm. it with them. Mm. So I personally believe in a circumstances you are caught up like that, mm. but God knows your attitude with which you are taking it. That's that time you, that you mm. pray and take. That's what I am telling it. Even mm. if anything is there. Mm -hmm. It will go away. Why are we praying before we are uh, uh, having uh, dinner or lunch? Mm -hmm. That God will bless that. When God blesses it, nothing can happen to us. You, you are right, brother. But mm -hmm. Chakri's contest is, he is working in the office, he is in a village context. Definitely mm -hmm. there is a problem. Mm -hmm. So we have to individually take decision on that. What Chakri is taking a decision is right. It's yeah. not Chakriya, no. It's not Chakriya. Yeah, Anil. Yeah. Anil. 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 <laughs> Anil. Anil. Yeah, Anil, yeah. Anil looking. Yeah. So but this as is for, all... As for my concern, Anna, we should maintain that separation. Definitely yeah. no doubt. There will be no separation. No. <laughs> but in the context of the culture and what we are doing now, this is a problem what we are having. Yeah. What yeah. universe you are not telling anything? <laughs> uh, I want to say, I want to say something. One of my solution was Aj mm -hmm. mera huh? oh dear. And he will say this is prasad and we have to eat it. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. <laughs> prasad doesn't work. <laughs> no, no, it, it worked. It worked. It worked in one place. I said Aj mera upase. Ah, upas kunne chanta prasad. <laughs> <laughs> Brother, that is okay, okay, okay. <laughs> okay. Yeah, what did he you did say, Brother Hubert? Lying? You said you are in uh, fasting. Fasting, yeah. Is it not lying? Yeah, yeah it was a lie. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But, uh -huh. but one, I remember one, that was my solution. I said, how to get out of it? I said, like, Aj mera upa se. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, I just yeah, out of it. it. You know? mm -hmm. I think uh, one of the Bible verses, and I in uh, when uh, uh, in uh, in while uh, those uh, prophets and Elijah were cooking food, uh, mm -hmm. suddenly they put some poisonous food in it. You know, the poison comes, a poison mushroom comes, and he mm -hmm. says he puts a twig and he prays, the poison goes away. You know, I, I, if 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 I sincerely pray, if I sincerely pray, God make this food. You know, God make this food uh, edible to me. I take away all of the things that are going to affect me spiritually or physically. Mm -hmm. I bet it does work. And mm -hmm. it, it, one yeah. of the one of the preacher was, uh, you know, that uh, one of the preacher was praying, uh, preaching a lot on the YouTube. He says he, he has a point in it. The point he makes is every shop, if you go and buy that gentleman or the lady who owns a shop, grocery shop or a supermarket, they get up and pray for everything. The already everything is everything is uh, puja is done for everything. So if you are buying from a shop, actually you are buying it. 
So he suggests to pray. I, I, I believe it. But I am looking up to you in this matter, how to deal with it. Being honest, honest with you, you, I don't know. I, I literally struggle still. I literally struggle. I, uh, yeah. I want yeah. to say another Can point. We... Another mm -hmm. point I want to make is uh, there was a time when David fed his army with food from the temple. Mm -hmm. Because uh, they were hungry, so he gave them food from the temple to eat. No, there was one. I think I think uncle, that is a different context. I think. Okay. Okay. Mm. So here, actually, we are talking about direct communication and indirect communication. So we need to be sensitive. Brother, can we I? We should not make minor things to build walls and a huge communication gap. Mostly, our the community makes minor things so major and we create walls. But Francis brought a good um, uh, explanation from his experience. That's how we need to be a little bit cautious. And at the same time, we should be really sensitive to people. You know, what food came in the home, they ate and they survived. Still, they are happy. You know, they, are, they, are, they have a good spiritual life. They are not, nothing happened to them. God's judgment hasn't come upon them. If we straight away reject because we are prone to do this direct communication, they're like, no, no, no. Yes, we need to have our spiritual standards. No matter what happened, we cannot uh, syncretize. But at the same time, we should understand the culture. And we should understand how best we can say no in a way that it will not hurt the individual. You know, here the issue is, if at all there is a need for hurting, when you say the truth, the truth will hurt at one point. But unnecessarily, you cannot go around and hurt people for the sake of standing for the truth. No, that here, maybe it's a long discussion. Maybe we keep on learning this, discuss, discuss this. The, uh, let me conclude within one or two slides. Low power distance and high power distance. People are more or less equal or deserve to be treated equally. Particularly in the Western culture, people are people. Everybody should be treated equally. What work dignity and age dignity, whether small or big, a woman or a man, everybody equal there. But here we are in a different culture. Rigid hierarchies in the Asian context. Rigid hierarchies. Now the elders, you need to all the time give some soaping. You should carry a soap all the time. You should keep on appreciating. Uh, no, uh, even though they are not good, you have to tell them good. And even though their preaching is very worst, and you have to tell them, "Wow, it's amazing. God talk to me." You know, it's all rigid hierarchy. If you don't appreciate, and they take your neck in the board meeting, and uh, status matters um, here. Degree of a formality or informality that is easily established within the workplace. So a lot of conflicts happen because of this cultural context. And if you think, yeah, everybody is equal, why should I uh, treat him differently? If you don't treat him, finish. That's the culture he is in. He, he wants it. He expects that. Um, the the even in the classroom, when to address someone to first name or how to greet another person, you know, it all happens in our Indian context, particularly the children, if they don't really greet the teacher in a proper manner, you know, those children are targeted in the schools. Just nothing. The child may be excellent, brilliant, but he gets all the time uh, less marks, C grade, because of, because. Uh, uh, the teacher misunderstood that he is not greeting. So there are so many cultural baggages that uh, plays a vital role in our relationships. Um, low uncertainty versus high uncertainty. Low uncertainty, avoidance, comfortable with risk, but uh, risk hours here. And differences among individuals and groups more easily tolerated. Less regulation, control over life situations in one part. The other Asian context, particularly risk hours, 
differences within or outside groups not easily tolerated. Conformity is comfortable. How one views people positions of authority. Here is an application point. How many times one asks perhaps a question. How readily someone accepts something as fact. How quickly one tolerates outsiders or situations that challenges the status quo. Loyalty to tradition versus desire for innovation. You know, here particularly, people are loyal to the tradition. What my tradition says, dharma, Hindu dharma is important. Desire for motivation. So these are a lot of cultural gaps that we need to understand. Indian value and communication style. Again, Indian time versus American time. You know, Indian time is cyclical. Time comes and goes, no punar janma. There is no, time is not linear. The Western time is, there is a starting, there is an end. Time goes like this. That's the time is very essential. But here time, that doesn't matter. Time comes and goes, there is no ending, there is no beginnings, there's sometimes cyclical. So many are native English speakers, British, define uh, gender roles, uh, higher bureaucratic systems of government, hierarchical status matters, body language, you know, you know, body language, many not say, no directly, as I already said, uh, need to infer, um, need to infer what does, what do they mean uh, when they are shaking hand or giving some kind of signals, we need to understand, we need to infer by their behavior, face is the index of mind, by face reading, you should understand what, the, what do they need. Titles are important. For example, an in Indian, um, uh, I really understood this. It's very difficult. I don't want a title, but if there is no title, people don't hella. People don't value, people don't think that uh, he is uh, valuable to um, hire him. You know, in a particular in Asian context, title matters, but in the Western culture, only skill matters. Of course, skill is essential. Later will they know, but the time by the time they know, you, lo you lose your opportunity. Less touching among people, especially between genders, particularly in the Asian context, no less touching. You know, we don't have that um, the hugging, kissing, or shake, touching. No, physical touch has a different meaning in Indian context, particularly in Asian context. But in the Western context, it's just a natural. You hug and then, you know, even um, you hug and you just a kiss and then uh, you shake hand, you sit on the lap and then you, know, you fall on the man or woman. You know, it's all, it's, it's, it's the cultural context. But in the Asian context, it's different. But now because of the globalization, a lot of things are changing. But in a Hindu cultural context, this is an abomination. Many churches, they don't understand the value of culture because nobody teaches. Nobody teaches. They think Bible says, and everybody in the Bible says a holy kiss, hugging, and you know, shake handing. But the Hindu culture is the same as it is from the ancient days. You go to any temple, sit there for half an hour, you never see anybody hugging, you never see anybody shake hand, you never see anybody rubbing their shoulder, this and that. They, they behave as they were. Their ancestors were behaving in a worship context. I'm talking about the worship context. But when they're in the office, they give shake hand. That's a different story. They behave like a Western culture. That's a different story. But our whole course is in a worship con gospel and culture. Culture in the context of spirituality. When they're not changing, why should we embrace a culture that is not really relevant to our culture and context of an Asian context? We need to be very cautious. And we need to introduce such indigenous cultural context, then people will respect us. I'm closing, almost done. So a lot of differences uh, in the developed countries and uh, developing countries like in India, we have our culture, enjoying with the nature, of course, modern technology at one hand and uh, our uh, our culture at one hand. Both cultures go hand in hand in, in, in the Asian context. And um, still today, we have in India also both types of cultures in the metro, 
uh, zidis at the same time rich uplers and you know we, we are an amalgamation of different cultures and you know so we have we have both cultures here the the direct communication and indirect communication you know. spirituality can be the, in that way also walking and the dancing and maybe um uh, uh, the um a different cultural context but the spirituality also can be sitting on a mat and maybe doing both are right we cannot uh, underestimate but it matters where we are working where where who are our audience even the food no we have a swadeshi food and videshi food mcdonalds are there every city in small small towns also coming now from videshi food and also swadeshi food both you know we are in a multicultural context so we need to understand what people need that's the essential thing that i that i bring to your notice keep on reading um, understand our society and let's be more focus on people what they need is important what they need if they really need direct communication we need to give if they need indirect communication we need we need to give such indirect communication so we need to go as what people need because we are in a different cultural context all cultures are good and all cultures have bad elements in this no culture is perfect i am not supporting one culture but what i wanted to say we need to understand people and we need to give what they need here i stop my lecture today